And we go on to our next category, which is screen heroes. For you, David, how many would you like? Screen heroes. Not one of them's Poppy. <laughs> <laughs> Two, three or four, Dave? Four. Four. Right, for your first move. This man now exerts his own form of justice as the equaliser. Edward Woodward. And for your second move, before becoming the pride of the Secret Service, he was famous for his saintly works. It Sean was... Connery. Sean Connery is wrong. So, a chance for you now, Dave. Before becoming the pride of the Secret Service, he was famous for his saintly works. Roger Moore. And this tough and sometimes dirty character found respectability as Mayor of Carmel. Clint Eastwood. And for the fourth move, he made films, but is best known for The Avengers. Patrick Whitney. You take the four moves. All right. <laughs> Across. Okay, Gil, strike the screen. A week on a Greek island, lovely prize. Uh, that's a lot. Now you've got to decide do you want to bank it or do you want to risk there's nothing on the next screen? One more. Okay, all right, it's all. It's up to you. Okay, just I hope there's not a hot spot there. A case of spirits and liqueurs. What do you want to do? That's it, you're banking it, you've got the holiday and the spirits and liquors. All right, Gil, holiday. All right. Okay, you've got the spirits and liquor. You've got to get them out of the building, though, first. <laughs> right, religion for you, David. How many moves? Two, three, or four? Religion. Two, please. Two. For your first... With which religion do you associate the following names? William Booth. <coughs> the... Salvation Army. For your second move, William Penn. The Quakers. That's right, you've got your two moves. <laughs> Thinking it all out there, Mary Ellen. Yes, OK, strike the screen. Whoops. <laughs> 20 LPs or cassettes or disc. Nice prize. No. Oh. 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 Banking it or are you going on? <laughs> Tied up to you. <laughs> all right, you're going on. On the halfway mark. Right there. Just get level here, whatever happens. Pine wardrobe and the 20 LPs. You're taking them home. OK, David. Right now, a little bit of catching up you needed, but two, three, or four, it's up to you. And the category is who thought of it first? Two. Two. For your first move, who invented the Wellington bomber and the bouncing bomb? Sir Barnes Wallace. And for your second move, who devised a type of rapid assembly bridge? Sir Donald Bailey. Bailey is right, that's it, the Bailey Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> well, we get across here, we're all level, aren't we? OK, strike yeah. the screen, Ben. Oh, I see there. Bad luck, babe. Just move a little bit up. All right, we go on to the next category, which is James Bond films. For you, Chris, the category is James Bond films. You've got three monitors up there. Do you want two or three? Three. Three? Mm. OK. First move. In which 007 film did the villain live on a well-protected island called Crab Key? Doctor No. For your second move, Sean Connery made a one-off comeback as Bond. In which film? Never say never again. And for the third move, in which film did George, La George Lazenby show off his skills as the man licensed to kill? Casino Royale. Is wrong, I'm afraid, Chris. David, you can take these three moves if you know the answer. In which film did George Lazenby show off his skills as a man licensed to kill? On Her Majesty's Service. On Her Majesty's Service gives you three moves. <laughs> All right, Mary Ellen, strike the screen. £250. You want to... <laughs> <laughs> He's doing give us a clue over there. He started it. He started, that's right. You want to bank it or do you want to move on? We'll bank it. 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 All right, you keep the £250. Next category is measuring things. <laughs> <laughs> Get that sort of audience some nights, you know. <laughs> measuring things. Three. Three. For your first move, what measures time? Uh, galvanometer. No, it's wrong, I'm afraid. Dave, what measures time? Okay. Chronometer. Chronometer is right. And for your second move, what measures earthquakes? Seismograph. And for your thir uh, third move, what measures electricity? Galvanometer. That's it, you take the three moves. <laughs> right, Jill. OK, Jill, strike the screen. Oh, 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 I don't believe this guy. All right, composers, with you again, David. What, you've got two moves. I must ask you a minimum of two questions, all right? It's composers. For your first move, who wrote the ballet music for Sleeping Beauty? Handel. 
Handel is wrong. Dave, who wrote the ballet music for Sleeping Beauty? Mozart. So we come to Tchaikovsky. you. Tchaikovsky is right. And for the second move, which composer wrote the orchestral suite known as the Enigma Variations? Elgo. Elgo's right. You've got the two moves. <laughs> right, Chris. But, uh, oh, Gil, sorry. <laughs> Oh, all right, we go on to the next. Let's just, they're all done at random, and that's how they come out. We're back with you again, David. Former careers. Two minimum. All right, here's your questions. What was John Mortimer before becoming an author and playwright? Uh, barista. That's right. And what o occupation had pop singer Sting before becoming a rock star? Teacher. That's right. Do you take the two moves? <laughs> all right, Ellen. Mary? Ellen? Mary Ellen? Oh, All right, we come back to you again, David. Royal houses, two, three, or four. Royal houses. <laughs> <laughs> little giggle, really. You didn't take something before you two. got on, did you? <laughs> two. Two. Yeah. All right. The following monarchs are associated with which royal house? Famous royal houses. Elizabeth II. Windsor. And for your second move, Henry VIII. Tudor. That's right. You got your two moves. <laughs> All right, then, Ben, strike the screen. £200. You want to bank it or do you want to go on? Oh. OK, you're going on. Can't be many more hotspots. Oh. <laughs> oh, OK, OK, OK. All right, we come back to you again now, uh, Chris. There's songs from the shows. One screen you have to move, but I must ask two questions. In which show does one of the characters sing about her past in the moonlight? Cats. And for the second move for that one screen, in this show, mainly about dancers, one of the hit songs was What I Did For Love. Chorus Line. That's it. You've got it. All right. Well, one screen, right the screen. Hell Farm Weekend for all you. <laughs> you don't need that, Chris, do you? <laughs> Right, now, what happens now, this is an all-important part of the show. You can decide to either bank that Hell Farm weekend or answer the main Strike It Lucky question and go on to our final. If you decide to answer the question and you get it wrong, you lose the Hell Farm weekend and you stay where you are and you take your turn. But if you answer the question and get it right, you keep that prize and you go on to our final. We're going to find out what you're going to do in a couple of minutes' time. See you after a break. Bye. <laughs> Strike it lucky. The situation we have, we've got Bev up there on two screens away from the end, Mary Ellen one screen away from the end down there, and Jill and Chris, we asked you before the break, or between the break, what do you want to do? Do you want to bank that prize or answer the main Strike It Lucky question? We'll answer the question. You've got to answer the question. I'll ask you this question, uh, you can confer as loud as you like, then I'll ask you the question again, and then I must have an answer. OK? Good luck. <coughs> Many Americans set off to Strike It Lucky along Route 66. Route 66 ended in Santa Monica, California. In which American city did it begin? Chicago. That's absolutely right. You're going to Chicago. David and Mary Allen, uh, you're taking away with you tonight a compact disc player, 20 LPs or cassettes or discs, a pine wardrobe and £250. <laughs> David and Bev, you're taking away with you tonight a selection of ball games, a microwave oven and £150. <laughs> and Chris and Jill, you get a cordless telephone, £150, a case of spirits or liqueurs, a week on a Greek island and a health farm weekend and a chance to go on tonight to win anything up to £2,000. Let's give them all a great round of applause. <laughs> Come on, Jill. <laughs> Right now, I'll explain how we play the end game. You move across as before, but this time you play the game horizontally and vertically. I'll ask you which move you want to make. You shout out top, middle or bottom. If you look at the screens there now, you can see there are ten arrows, ten questions and ten hotspots. The questions are true or false. If you give me an answer that's incorrect, it becomes a hotspot. For the correct answer, you gain another move. If you go for our top money tonight of £2,000, you cannot hit any more than two hotspots. For £1,500, no more than three hotspots. And for £1,000, no more than four hotspots. 
Before you decide that, our computer will jumble them all up. Right, they've gone. So it's up to you now. Do you want to go for a thousand, fifteen hundred, or two thousand pounds? And whatever you won so far, you keep that. Whatever happens, what do you think they should do? One thousand, fifteen hundred, or two thousand? <laughs> <laughs> thousand. All right, they're going for a thousand pounds, and let's wish them all the best. Jill, you like to stand there? Just stand beside as we go across, and follow me across. All right, you've already won a lots of lovely prizes. Let's hope you can put some more money onto that. Top, middle, or bottom for a thousand pounds? Top, middle, or bottom? <laughs> Middle. Middle. That's a move. All right, we're on our way. Top, middle, or bottom? Oops, <laughs> bottom. <laughs> bottom. Bottom. It's a question. Hinduism is the oldest major formal religion in the world. True or false? True. That's right. That becomes a move. Well done. Top, middle, or bottom? Top, middle, or bottom? Middle. Middle. Or bottom? middle. 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 And it's another question. St. Paul's Cathedral is the largest religious structure ever built in the world. True or false? False. That's right. It's the Angkor Wat in Campuchia. That's another move. Now you come. Now you want a top, middle, or bottom? <laughs> top on the top. That's another move. Well <laughs> top, middle, or bottom? <laughs> well, top. top again. <laughs> Oof. Question. The oldest uh, army in the world is the Swiss Guard at the Vatican City. True or false? True. That's right. It's from the 1400. Yeah. Doing very well here. Over you come. Right. If you go for a thousand pounds, you've got five screens to go. The situation now: if you get it on this one, you've won the thousand because we allow you four. We don't need to go through the rest. So it's on this one: the top one, the middle one, or the bottom yeah. one for a thousand pounds. Bottom, the bottom one for a thousand. Oh. <laughs> all right, that's one of your hot spots gone, so we can do it on this one. All right. Bottom again. This again. Bottom again. Yeah. Bottom for a thousand. Thousand pounds on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. I want you to take it home with you tonight. You've got a cordless telephone, you've got a case of spirit or liqueurs, a hell farm weekend, a week on a Greek island, a thousand pounds plus 150, 1150 pounds. You're taking away with you tonight. They're done smashing. Let's give them a nice round of applause for Captain. Yeah. Do see you sometime in the future. Good night, God bless. Good night. <laughs>